despite Norwegian firm Equinor and its Australian partner OceanX just the other week abandoning plans to build a massive wind farm off the coast of the Illawarra. This is just south of Sydney. Locals remain concerned that Chris Bowen will push ahead anyway with his plans. There's been a huge public response to this project, which I've discussed with locals on the program before. Now adding to the outcry is a group of six retired engineers who have put forward independent analysis, warning that the science behind the wind project simply doesn't stack up. These engineers report that the wind farm, which would run from Cronulla to Kiama, would impact household electricity bills and necessitate significant taxpayer subsidies. Their peer-reviewed assessment also indicates that floating offshore wind may be at least four times more expensive than onshore wind and even nuclear. One of the engineers behind the report is Cole Poulter, who's got over 40 years of experience specialising in heavy steel fabrication with specific experience in hostile marine environments. I'm pleased to say Cole joins me now. Cole, as I said, you, you, you know, engineering background, you've dealt with these massive sort of steel structures before, you know, a fair bit about building in the marine environment, which is challenging in, in itself. What made you come out of retirement to take on this issue? And what are your key concerns with Chris Bowen's plan? Oh, good to be with you, Peter. I guess it all started when the community consultation process took place about a year ago and we couldn't find anything about this project. We just knew it was going ahead. 1,000 square kilometres of huge turbines in the water. So we decided as a community to try and do our own research and we had first look at it, very, very big concerns. It was high risk to both the environment and engineering wise as well. So we formed a group of engineers and we've got a mixture of civil and electrical and mechanical, all the disciplines you would require to have a good look at this project. Cole, is anyone around the world trying to do something at this scale as Chris Bowen is planning to do off the Illawarra coast? Well, we'll be the first. We had a good look around. We could only find a t grand total of 25 turbines in the world that are floating. Uh, this project alone will have 193 and they'll be twice the size of the ones currently in place. And the ones in place are in water about 80 metres deep. The water off the coast of New South Wales is 135 to 800 metres deep. So it's quite a, wow. an engineering challenge. We had a good look at the biggest one, which is Kincardine in Scotland. It's got a grand total of six turbines. And uh, we managed to get all their accounts, the cost estimates and the actual costs and we pulled it apart and came up with our own cost estimates based upon that. Um, we halved the cost mm -hmm. that we found at King Cardine because this project is bigger and there'll be a bit more knowledge about it. But then we had to add in uh, substations that are floating, never been done before. They don't exist yet. King Cardine didn't have any. We had to add in dynamic cables to take the power from the substations to the to the shore. Those cables don't exist in the size required at the moment. It's got a lot of engineering risks. A lot of things have not yet been developed and yet we're supposed to be starting construction in 2028. It just doesn't make sense. So you're not surprised that these commercial players have pulled out and this is why you're saying even if there are new entrants, it's going to require enormous um, uh, taxpayer investment to make this thing work, even if it's feasibly, you know, technologically possible just to make the numbers add up. Well, an engineer will tell you, you can build anything. It's what it's going to cost is the problem. And when you look at King Cardine, uh, they've got a subsidy last year of 72 million dollars a year and they still lost 59 million dollars in that year so the amount of money that's got to be thrown to these projects is just enormous mm. now my big concern is this project as bad as it is financially it's it's basically unbankable unless 
the government throws our money at it to get it up. Mm. What about the impact on power prices? Because you also looked at that. Tell me what you found. Well, because the generation cost of this will be at least four times higher than uh, onshore wind or even nuclear, mm. and your power bill is about a third of it is generation cost. Now, if, if this power was brought into my power bill in Kiama, my power bill would double. It would go from 2000 wow. to 4000 a year overnight if I got all my power from this source. Cole, just a quick one, because I don't often have an expert with marine construction on the program, and people often ask me, you know, what's particular about putting a turbine, a steel turbine, in the water in a marine environment that's different on land? Can you explain where there are the extra challenges? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, well, off the coast of New South Wales, we all often get those uh, low-pressure systems that generate quite big waves. It's not unusual to get a five-metre wave at Kiama, where I live. Of course, the high winds, we had 110 kilometre hour winds the other day, and the corrosion. I mean, it's a salt water environment. Um, give you an example. Um, in Scotland, there was a, a wind farm, floating wind farm, called High Wind. A Norway company built it. They had eight turbines. It was put in in 2017. In 2020, they had to tow every turbine back to Norway because they weren't working properly and that's after three years. It's a very aggressive environment and to maintain a, a, a project like this, you're going to need to upgrade the port of Port Kembla, spend a lot of money there, you need a huge amount of area to bring in all of the turbine blades and the turbines themselves and uh, you probably need to dredge the harbour because these floating turbines are very deep, very go very deep to get them in and out. You're going to need a crane on site, maybe two, 60 storeys high mm. to handle these things. The, each blade is uh, longer than the uh, wingtips of a uh, Airbus A380 from one tip to the other. Uh, these are huge machines and they're relying on uh, these things being in place for you know, 30, 35 years. It won't happen. 20 years at, mes at best and in, in terms of uh, mm. high wind in Scotland, three years. Mm. Gosh, it's great to get an expert on the program. Cole, thank you for your time. Thank you for that little bit of an added explanation. Well, I'll say this to my viewers at home. You heard that from an expert engineer specialised in marine environments. Put that up against what Chris Bowen's telling you and you tell, tell me where you want to spend taxpayer funds.